ladies of el salón the chronicles oye ladies of el salón the chronicles escucha ladies and we are back folks for another episode in season four i'm liz hi i'm suli and we have the dis Distinguished honor to have with us a fellow alumni of the Vagina Monologues, Marcy Campos, a todo lo... Why can I say that word? Todo loga? Todo loga? Todo loga. Todo loga. So tell us what the heck that means and who are you, Marcy? Uh, so todo loga means that basically I'm a jack of all trades. And um, I literally, in the monologues, I had like my hand in everything. And I am... A uh, Dominican born, raised here in the Heights. I'm a New York City school teacher, a uh, mom of a child with autism, and a uh, mami chula as well. Oh, mami, that's right. We're all mami chulas. I, yeah, I, wanna, I don't want to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive right in. Zuli, go ahead, jump right in. And let's... Yes. So, Marcy, welcome, welcome. I, it, it's been a year since we've seen each other because, I, I mean, Wow. COVID hit and it's just been impossible. It's like right after we finished the vagina monologue, everything like shit hit the fan and everyone just kind of went into their own little space and disappeared. Mm -hmm. So we didn't even get to celebrate um, our, you know, like, or even have an encore to the vagina monologues, which is where we had the pleasure of meeting you yes. uh, through, through the, um, through the recording and, and the, the, the uh, rehearsals. Yeah. So, um, so it's good to see you. And how's I know, Aiden it's doing? Good to see you girls too. He's good. How's He's Aiden? watching cartoons in the um, living room right now. I told Todo him, I was like, "Mommy's gonna be recording." He's like, "Okay, I'm gonna be quiet." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> He's such an amazing child. He's, He's such an he amazing is. child. He is. He is. He. We had the pleasure of meeting him as well because you brought him to a lot of the uh, rehearsals, and mm -hmm. it was just. He is a trip. I, we love him. We love Aiden. <laughs> so, um, you know. We know that you're a teacher. You work for the Board of Education. Um, so what grade do you are you teaching? I was the technology teacher, but because of COVID and there's not enough in-person teachers, now I'm a classroom teacher again. So oh, okay. I am teaching uh, 12 to 1 to 1, which is a um, classroom of children with special needs. And I am teaching a 34 bridge, so third and fourth graders. Nice. That's challenging. Oh, my that is challenging. It's a lot. <laughs> that is very, that is very challenging. Um, so we have a couple of questions. I don't know if I should dive in or we should just we get to know you a little better. So yeah, dive into the questions. Okay, there's and we'll no, get to know no you format. as we go along. We'll do it all a mishmash. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the questions that we have here is, how has it been for you during the pandemic as a single mother, a mother to an autistic child, and also a teacher? It's a lot. <sighs> yeah. Um, so I think I submitted one of the uh, one of those clips for the Corona Chronicles. Yes. <laughs> so um, it, it was a lot. Um, just adjusting to the fact that I was supposed to be teaching the, my students and you know providing them with like the top education, plus supporting my child who cannot. He can do some things independently, but he needs a lot of prompting. So it was like I'm stretching myself in every direction, and then on top of that, you know, dealing with coronavirus like I actually got sick we got sick at the beginning like right when the schools shut down we we were oh, sick no. with COVID yeah so it, it, it's been a lot like mentally like I've been I just went through it uh last year and it wasn't like I want to say in May my mom was like you're better come down to Jersey and just be outside I'm like okay so that okay. was like what I did to like help cope with it but it was a lot for me oh yeah. wow Oh, my goodness. And it's got to be tough. I mean, you're not only a teacher, but you also have a child that you have to dedicate time to and also teach. Right. Because mm -hmm. he, he, he's at home. Right. He's not it's not like he's going into a classroom. So you also have to help him with his work and his. So it's like you're you're never off. You're always yeah. on. You're always working. So yeah. that's got to be tough. Yeah. And the amount of work that the teachers are giving is ridiculous. Like for his school, he has like seven subjects. Each teacher gives classwork. He has to be on the on the on the little Zoom call, and then after the Zoom call, he also has to submit homework. So it's fourteen pieces of work plus the almost a whole day online. Oh you know, insane. and then me stretching myself to like teach my students at the same time. Like at one point, because last year I was a tech teacher, I was able to you know post work for the students, but constantly like checking and grading and responding to them because I didn't want them to feel like I wasn't there for them. 
Right. Yeah. No, and it's got to be tough. It's 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 a tough transition, right? Because I personally feel that the kids nowadays are they're being cheated a little bit, you know, because they're not having that in-person kind of feel. I think for some kids it's worked out pretty well, but I think for other kids that need that that to be there kind of thing that mm-hmm. it's you know they it's it's been tough for them it's been tough for them to kind of you know be able to learn and and process everything it's hard i think it's been very hard my son is a senior uh i think it sucks for him he's not really getting a graduation he's not really getting a prom he's not you know so all the things that you look forward to you're not getting but on the flip side he's done very well he's oh, done okay. extremely well and he's been able he actually they had a, a choice of doing of doing the hybrid and he mm-hmm. was like, no, I want to stay home. I mean, it could be in part because he's lazy, but mm-hmm. he, he, he's enjoyed it and he's doing well. I go and I check and I make sure and I'm like, all right, you're doing good. So, so I guess for him it's worked out, but I know that it's been tough for other, other, uh, children. So, uh, let me see, let me go down the list. So what I has have, been the I most, have... oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was, <laughs> go ahead. Oh you, no, I thought you know how we are. <laughs> yeah. Go so, ahead. Marcy. To the extent that you can, right, mm-hmm. how has, because there are a lot more changes happening within the Board of Ed right now in terms of whether it's three feet, six feet, um, testing, uh, you know, vaccinations and all of that. Um, what is the message that either the teachers union or the Board of Ed is sending and how is that impacting your ability as a professional and then also as a mom on the other side of it? So, um there's like mixed messages, right? The the mayor saying one thing, the chancellor was saying another. He actually stepped down because he felt like they were they had their own agenda and they weren't really listening to what he felt was safe for the students. So he was like, I can't do this anymore, and he like quit. So um, teachers union is telling us one thing, but then they're like cutting deals with with um you know the chancellor's office or you know the the mayoral office it's like very political and i feel like at the end of the day they really and this is going to sound messed up they don't really care about the students or the teachers because if they did they would want to keep feeling. us safe i know it's a valid feeling of course and um um i'm actually back in person this year so um i'm going in four days out of the week and um at first i had aiden online i was paying somebody to tutor him and do the classes with him because he needs somebody here but it became too much and when it came the time like in november i believe it was they asked us if we wanted to opt him in for in person and i said yeah and um at first he was just going he was supposed to just go like a couple of days a week and and because he has a smaller classroom they're all there like the entire their entire week i mean there's some parents that did opt them out to be online only but he's going every day in person and like his school actually shut down like a i want to say like last month um for because they had like a bunch of COVID cases so you know even with that like my school shut down too so it's like you're in person but then like you're constantly like going with the back and forth and the parents are frustrated too. So there's been a lot of back and forth with prioritizing teachers as, you know, being vaccinated for those that want to be vaccinated and, you know, not being in that group of first responders and all of that where, and then the conflict with that is that, so everybody wants the school to be open. So what has been, what have you heard in your community in terms of from the teacher's standpoint is it safe for us to return? Should we be part of that first responder group, regardless of age, that gets vaccinated so that that can then translate into opening up the schools? Like, what has been the message in, in that arena? They haven't mandated us to be um, vaccinated as of yet, but I'm sure it's coming down the pipeline because they want the schools back open. Um, but for the most part, the teachers that I know, they're like, no. <laughs> there's teachers that are online they're like no i'm not gonna get vaccinated i'm not coming back in person like i don't feel safe and it's a valid you know i feel like that's a valid point for me i miss being in person i miss like teaching my kids without a mask and being able to hug them and you know all that i mean even if we go back i wouldn't you know i would still be safe i'm you know, I maintain my distance, but it has changed the way that you teach because a lot of these kids need a lot of love. And I feel like right now I have to translate that love verbally, which like some kids don't receive it that way. And culturally, from a Dominican standpoint, we love to hug and kiss. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't kiss my kids, but (laughs) I'll give them like a sideways hug, you know. (laughs) But yeah, 
yeah, no, like uh, you know, I'm I'm I miss being able to like high five my kids and be like, hey, you guys are doing an awesome job, or like, hey guys. So I finally was able to jump in. Sorry about that. Um, Esperate, yeah. do you think this is Bustelo? No, I think it's vodka. <laughs> it's vodka I'm still... This is coffee, but it's you know it's very dark coffee. Um, anyways, Marcy, so good to see you. I feel like it's been forever that I see your beautiful face. I miss you so much. But anyways, I won't interrupt the flow of the show. I'm sorry. Um, so my question to you is, uh, how do you feel about children being vaccinated for COVID? All right. So I have a lot of opinions about <laughs> vaccines with children. Um, first in of general, all, yeah, in, in, in general, not just the COVID. So first of all, I believe that, and this is going to be controversial, but um, honestly, Aiden seemed like he was typically developing until he got like that, you know, cocktail of vaccines that they did for the 18 months. And then, and he was talking and everything. And then all of a sudden he became basically mute, like he wasn't speaking anymore. And he was getting so frustrated that he was like being physically aggressive with us. And then my aunt, who she actually passed away, she was like, she was a school teacher and she was like, Marcia, Aiden's not talking. I'm like, he isn't talking? And she's like, no. And then we started listening and he wasn't. So I feel in my heart of hearts that that had to do something with it. I'm not going to say that every vaccine for every child is going to cause the same thing, but maybe Aiden's um, environment, um, his genetics, all of that had to play into the fact that it just so happened that after those vaccines, there was an onset of autism. So it could have been a contributing factor. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but like, that's really interesting because yeah. usually you know, I, I've heard about this and anti-vaxxers and stuff, but can like, can you pinpoint like what age was this what, what, that you noticed the difference between when he was speaking and he stopped speaking after the vaccination? It was a year and, and six months. Oh, wow. It was like literally those vaccines and a few months later, that's when my aunt came to visit and she was like, he's not talking. And I was like, he's not talking. He had over 25 words and he was a kid that he'd be like, Aiden, take a picture. And he would look at the camera and like smile. And then like it went like completely like he was just like in his own world. So it was like, like, like a, like a, like a veil went over him, which is, um, you know, it, it was really sad. It was hard to accept. But as for the COVID vaccine for children, I do not think that it is necessary if the adults are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the kids can get COVID because I saw like cases of children that, you know, had the coronavirus. Aiden had it. But it wasn't anything, not like how we get it. You know, he was fine. He just had like a fever, like a light fever. And then he was sleeping a lot. And then like a couple of days later, he was fine. I was the one that lasted like almost three weeks sick. So, you know, as for the kids, I do, I'm, I, I'm against them getting vaccinated right now until we see what the side effects of the vaccine are. Cause there has to be like scientific studies to see the ongoing effect of people getting vaccinated. Yeah. Well, the problem with vaccines, I'm sorry, Mari, the problem with vaccines is that you really don't know the effects until 20, 30, 40 years later. That's what I'm saying. And that's that's the issue. There, there are long term ramifications to all of these treatments. And you really I mean, personally, I was waiting for people to turn green and, you know, two months passed. Nobody turned green. Um, and I was like, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm away. I was um, waiting to read the but, reviews because I'm a review reader. So I was right. like, well, I'm but the, the unfortunately, it's not a five star, you know, I'm not taking it. I'm kidding. <laughs> right. But, but unfortunately, like, you know, when we started immunizations way back when, whenever it started, it's only now uh, that we're seeing maybe some of the ramifications or the secondary effects of those vaccines from the 60s, 70s or 80s. So, yeah. Um, okay, go ahead, Mari. Sorry. No, no, no. I just, I, I, I wanted to ask you that question because I, I, because of the direct correlation between vaccination and what some people believe uh, about autism. So that's why I was interested in your take on it because mm -hmm. as a, as a parent to an autistic child, I can imagine that that may be difficult, a difficult decision. Um, 
also, I forgot to mention, we forgot to mention Zuli's gone. She had um, somewhere to be. And so, you know, I jumped in. So, no, this isn't Zuli. This is Maddie. Zuli didn't get dark over the, the last two minutes. It's just she had to go and I jumped in. Um, my question also is, okay, so this is completely different. And, of okay. course, I'm, I'm, I'm the nosy one. So I'm going to ask I you love a that about personal you. question. <laughs> right? Maddie, she's the one who did this. I'm the nosy. I'm like the one that's going to ask you that question that's going to be like, um, um, um. Uh, so how do you introduce your love interest to your life as a single mother to an autistic child? And the second part to that question is, and how do you introduce your child to a new love interest? Okay. So, um, I have dated people long term and it takes me a while to like, let them be close to Aiden because he's so, you, you guys met him. He's very like, he's yeah. like, Hey, what's up? You know? And he's like, wants to hang around and like, um, spend time with you. But, um, I don't want to inter introduce him to somebody unless it's serious, just for the fact that he, if the person's not going to be around and he's asking for that person, because that's the type of kid he is. Remember, he used to ask for my mother all the time, which he's around, mm -hmm. obviously. But he gets, yeah. like, attached to people and he, like, he wants to hang out with them all the time. So um, I tend to not introduce them until it's, like, really serious. But I tell them, like, straight up front when we're, like, even, like, in the getting to know you process, like, hey, I'm a single mother and I, my child also has autism. Have you ever were like dealt with people with autism? And that's like a probing mm -hmm. question. Cause if I get a weird response from the person, I'm like, Nope, it's done. Or like if the person's like, yeah, I've worked with people with autism and blah, blah, blah. Or, or I have people in my family that have autism. Then like that gives me kind of like a, a like a, a, like a better feeling. Like they're going to understand them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had guys actually ask me, like, so what, what kind of behaviors does he have? And I, like, I'm like, okay, maybe we should mm -hmm. keep talking. But, yeah, for the most part, I wait at least three to four months before I present Aiden to them. And then um, usually I present them as a friend mm -hmm. at first. Right. I don't tell them, like, that's my boyfriend or that's a person I'm seeing because I feel like he doesn't understand that just yet. But, um yeah, I'll just tell him that that's my friend. And he's like, oh, hey, what's up? And he'll, like, kind of, like, feel them out. Um, one time, I was dating this guy for, like, three years. And um, he met him for the first time. And he was like, oh, hey, Aiden, you should go to your room. Aiden didn't like how he said that. So he, like, ninja start his phone in the air. And then when I, like, <laughs> when I um, reprimanded it, I was like, oh, no, we don't do that. That is not okay. He was like, that's an ugly hat. You look like a goat. And he, like, walked off to his room, and I was, like, <laughs> he has a little, he, he, he's very sweet, but he's, like, he can be, like, he got him, like, right there, and he was, like, do I really look like a goat? I'm, like, I was, like, he's a kid. He doesn't know. <laughs> but listen, you know, the, the autism, it, there's a spectrum, and, you know, even for the person who may never have been exposed or whatever, simply just being open to understanding and learning and not buying into the stereotype because there's a lot of misinformation mm -hmm. about whether it, you know, autism or, or, um, oh my God, my brain is, uh, what's the other spectrum? Asperger's. Um, Asperger's. Um, there's a very fine line and it's, it's, it, it can be complicated. I, I, you know, I think that it's just so important to have an open mind and explore and really be sensitive to the individual's needs, whether there's sound sensitivity, social sensitivity, whatever it is, um, to just be open to that. And I think that would be a good situation mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of complexities within that umbrella. Well, I can imagine also because, like, it's already touchy with your my own badass kids. So, you know, to add another, you know, layer to that, you know, for a person coming in and even as like, I'm already real protective of my kids. And then if I felt like extra, like I have to like now, you know, check for things that, you know, see how this person responds to my child or how my child responds to this person. Um, you know, I can imagine that that adds another layer for you so that, must make um, dating even more, you know, uh, complicated than we already have it. 
Yeah, there's um there's been times that I'm like, oh, like I'm going to see somebody and they're like, I'm like, okay, um, I'm going to have to cancel. I can't get a sitter. They're like, oh, bring them along. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Um, yeah. Even like what, even in the language, like when they refer to like his autism, if they say like, oh, el problemita del niño, it's like he doesn't have a problem. Problem, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a problem. Like, he's just wired differently and receives things differently than we do. So that's, like, that's a big thing. Like, that's those are, like, little red flags that I'm like, mm, yeah, no. But, yeah, I, th- I feel like that's why it took me so long to start dating. And then now that I am dating, I'm just, like, more cautious of who I let into my life and who I'm, you know. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. Did yeah, I hear Marcy, right? Marcy, you walked in, you walked into something. <laughs> Metite el pie, Marcy. Metite el pie. So, so, so wait, so, so, did I hear that right? So you mira, are mira, dating? Mira, 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 mira. So wait, are, are you, are you dating someone or are you on the market? I'm on the market. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see another, I see another, um, uh, what you would call it, a uh, project for me and Zuli. <laughs> well, Marcy, I don't, I think you heard our last episode. You know what they did to me, right? What did they do? <laughs> so they signed me up to Plenty of Fish. No, we I mean, I'm just a whole bunch. <laughs> No, they but they did it without me knowing, and oh I found gosh. out on the on the recording. They're like, "Oh, by the way, you have messages waiting," and I'm like, "Where? Like, what are you talking about?" I mean, I have a profile. You know, I have nice pictures up there. Um, I'm just like very like selective about about who I swipe right on, and then, you know, I like. I kind of like got like, you know, from that episode from Maddie and like from speaking to her too, like I feel them in a certain way just so that I'm getting like a top quality person that yeah. will match with me. Yeah. So, you know, you have to be selective like that. No, but yeah. you know what's happened to me? Like not to go on, on the tangent now, but you know what's happened to me lately? What? Like there's two or three people that we've been texting and pick up the phone and they all sound like they're from Ethiopia or South, South you know, and, so and, they, and they, people from Ethiopia. No, nothing except the profile says they're from freaking Iowa. You have so, to be careful. There's a lot of scammers. So, no, yeah. So Mari, Jamaican supposedly is in the United Arab Emirates doing some construction. So we ended up on the phone and he sounds like he's from, like he is from Saudi Arabia. But I'm like, so you're not Jamaican, the white Jamaican. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he's hot too. The language, yeah, but the 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 the. So sh- the tell him to just shut up. So tell him to just shut up. He doesn't need to talk. Like seriously, <laughs> he could just be quiet because he looks good. <laughs> oh my god! You have to watch Ninety Day Fiance because on there, there's like oh. there's actual scammers that have gotten that- married with women. There was this one guy. That- yeah. He said he was um. He, oh, he put up this, like, beautiful por- profile picture. He was, like, hot, like, you know, chiseled, whatever. And then when she goes to meet him in India, he's, like, this short, stumpy, completely different person than the, the you know, the profile. So, you know, you have to be careful because there's, there's a lot of um, right, uh, scammers. I've, ha- I've had three like that. I shared, I shared a voice note with them, and they were like, who? What is this person? Oh no, my he God. sounded drunk. Like he sounded so drunk just... on that voice note. Yeah. <laughs> oh my I God. The, 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 no, the surgeon, the surgeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sounded so it, it, Yeah, it didn't meet the, it didn't meet the profile. So whatever. <laughs> um, but so Marcy, back to our topic mm-hmm. as, um, what kind of resources? So, you know, from you learning that Aiden was autistic or that journey that it, that you went through. Um, and based on all of your experience, if you were talking to another mom who is on the verge of, I, I, I don't know what's happening with my son, but I know there's something different. What would be your recommendation? What kind of resources would you advocate for or, or provide? That is a very touchy subject, especially Cause you know, I have the, now I, I feel like I have the, like, you know how it's queer. I have like the autistic eye. Like I can see kids because I'm a special education teacher as well. I can tell. So I don't like to be like, Hey, your kid has, is having issues. You should, you know, whatever. I kind of like broach the subject. Like 
hey, so how's everything with your child, right? And then usually they're like, oh, no está caminando, no está hablando, no está mirando. And then when they say stuff like that, I, I don't say like, hey, your kid has autism. I'm like, have you brought it up to your pediatrician? And then they usually say no. So I was like, at the next visit, bring it up. If they tell you that it's nothing, that it's part of a developmental thing, then you ask for an evaluation. And if they tell you no, you request it writ like written. A written you write down a letter and you give it to the pediatrician because illegally, if you give them a letter, they have to respond within 30 days. If not, you have the right to sue. So my pediatrician at the time was like, um, when I when I went in with my concern, I was like, oh, he's not, he stopped speaking. And, and she was like, oh, no, that's nothing that happens. I was like, developmentally, that doesn't happen. Once you learn how to speak, you do not stop speaking. You don't so, regress. you know, I had to advocate for him to get evaluated. But once he was evaluated, um, you know, he was put into early intervention. I would say whatever services, even if you don't think your kid has autism those services are amazing like even if it's just a speech delay um they will get your kid talking like aiden wasn't talking and now i can't get him to be quiet so you know and that was like from an early age he was like requesting things and and all of that so early intervention is amazing um make sure you get you know whatever services they're recommending don't feel like oh no my kid doesn't need that like they're the experts listen to them and then once your kid gets to a certain age you have to do the front door po process with this office um in new york state which is called opwdd yeah. with opwdd they give you all kinds of resources you can get respite care you can get um you know home health aid if your child needs it yeah. Um, all kinds of resources that are going to help you as a mom and like alleviate some of the stress because it is very stressful. So I would just want to point out that one of the most important things about OPWDD is that you have to be diagnosed as a child. So you cannot enter OPW, so the Office of Persons with Developmental Disabilities, mm -hmm. OPWDD. It's a, it's a comprehensive service agency that provides, whether it's residential treatment, housing, and all the other ancillary services that Marcy was talking about, but you can't enter that as an adult. Mm -hmm. So if you're not diagnosed as a child... Um, then you will miss out on those services. So from my perspective, from the psychological world, you know, it's really about examining for parents, accepting what you're seeing. Because no parent wants to accept there's something not right with my child. There's something different. Mm -hmm. So not wrong, but there's just something different. And I think that, you know, the, the work that I do with my parents that I counsel is really about acceptance and understanding that your child is not less than they learn differently mm -hmm. and there are resources out there and you're not accepting or understanding is only going to serve to hurt the child. Likewise, ABA services are the most recommended services for children with autism. However, most insurance companies don't cover it. It's actually going to be, I was hearing from um, Aiden's neurologist um, that coming soon, they said this year, but I don't know if it got delayed because of COVID, but they're going to be accepting it now going forward, that's which amazing. is exciting. I well, it doesn't make sense how that's the most recommended service and yet nobody wants to cover it because it's it costs more. It's expensive, but it's when you do the research that is the service that is recommended that is most effective. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't make sense. He received ABA the whole time that he was in early intervention. And then I don't know what it was, but they were like, they didn't put it on because they say that public schools don't provide it, which they don't. But if you advocate for your child to continue those services, especially if they're doing better because of it, you can keep that on their um, individualized educational plan, which is the IEP. Right. Usually ABA services are stopped at early intervention because early intervention gets a lot more resources from the federal government, mm -hmm. and that's why it doesn't go on to mainstream school. And so you're right. You have to advocate for it to continue first, second, third grade, um, and on. So um, right. ABA is a little controversial. I know a lot of parents um, have an issue with it because it's like they feel like they're treating their child like an animal, and they're like, you know, giving them a reward every time. I'm like, no, it's like – they need that reinforcer and then later on they're going to take that away and they're going to be able to do the things with you asking them without receiving something in return. 
Yeah. You know, so it's 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 just there's like a science uh, there's obviously scientific data and um research backing it up, but it definitely helped Aiden a lot. Like from Aiden was a, the kid to tantrum at the supermarket and throw himself on the floor and now we go out and he's like holding my hand he doesn't try to like run away and he knows that you know it's dangerous out there but I feel like that all stemmed from the ABA therapy when he was small yeah well I have actually a question from a parent that is oh. um, a parent to uh, uh, a child with special needs and what uh, I've been told is that there aren't a lot of after-school programs or extracurricular activities provided for um, for her for her daughter, and she was wondering if there are any centers or recommendations, um, agencies that you can recommend. Um, unfortunately, because of that. Um, she has two daughters, one that is not special needs and she has a regular social life while the other one uh, with special needs doesn't. And there is, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, there's, a, there's an obvious difference between the two children. So she wants uh, any programs or anything that you can recommend for, you know, for children with special needs after school and extracurricular. Um. The after school programs, it is true that it's very limited. Um, Aiden was able to get into after school at the elementary school that he was at, but when I went to visit one time to pick him up, I saw some things that didn't sit right with me, so I decided not to um, pursue it because it wasn't the teachers that were doing the after school. It was just um, regular Joe Schmoes. So for me, I'm very like particular about how Aiden's spoken to and how he's treated. So um, whatever program she does find, I believe that the service coordinator, if she does go through OPWDD, would be able to connect with after school programs. I know for sure Aiden goes to overnight respite, which is like... Um, yeah. On weekends, he goes away. He also does summer camp. So he goes away for a week to a camp, and he's, like, independent. The I, I would always research the place. I actually went up there. It's kind of far away. Um, we went to visit to see, and they showed us the facilities. They have a pool. They have farm animals. They do, like, equine therapy. And um, in the in the bunk, because that, that's what I was concerned about. Like, are the kids going to be sleeping by themselves? Who's going to be supervising? So basically, the bunk is this room and is divided by this um, wall, which would have a glass, but it doesn't. So the adults are sleeping on one side and the kids are sleeping on the other side. So that if anything happens in the middle of the night, they're like paying attention to what's going on and they can, um, you know, take care of it in the moment. Um, and then he loves it. He like, when I put him on the bus to go to camp, he's like, bye mom. See ya. Because of COVID it's been, um, it's been paused. There's also a swim swimming program, which I'm going to give a shout out to reach. They have like a oh, yes. specific way of teaching the kids how to swim. And Aiden is a swimmer. Um, the reason why they teach kids with autism how to swim is because they're so drawn to the water. Unfortunately, there was that one child that um, escaped to school, you know, and there was a tragedy. So, you know, I, for me, I was like, that's important. So I um, put him in the swimming classes, which are paused right now also because of COVID. But he, he loves the water now. So that program is amazing. Um, you can pay for it up front. And I know that you can get reimbursed by um, the agency that if you, you know, if they get the referral through OPWDD. Right. And so in addition to that, uh, Autism Speaks is uh, a federal, is it federal? Marcy? I'm not sure if it's a, I it's, believe it's an it's organization. Federal. Yeah. It's an uh, autism speaks is an organization that provides resources, um, for parents and families of children with, you know, autism or on the Asperger syndrome and a spectrum. And, uh, they can have a lot of resources there, but let's not forget the education and the support for the parent or the caretaker. Um, it's extremely important that it goes side by side, mm -hmm. that it's not just, oh, my child is going here because as you talk about the camp and all that, it was probably more traumatizing for you than it was for Aiden. Mm -hmm. He's ready to go see you, mom. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're like, oh my God, are you going to be able to function? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And so there's that separation anxiety. So I think that the support needs to go along the way for both the caretaker, um, and the child so that they both can be educated and learn about what's happening 
so that the parent caretaker can best provide services for the child. I feel like that's where EI um, steps in. The, the ABA therapist that's working with your child is also educating you at the same time on how to, um, you know, build a program and follow through because consistency is the most important thing. There is, um, even in the in the classroom, right, there's no way that I'm going to be teaching your child something and there's no follow through in the house. Then when they come back the next day, they're not going to be doing the thing, you know, the, the skill that I taught them. So um, that's important. Also, parent groups. Guys, seriously, it's so important to talk to other parents. Um, usually, uh, my, my son's pediatrician's office, which is um, Pediatrics 2000, they offer a parent group on um, Fridays, I believe, um, during the day, and it's good to go. They bring um, specialists. They bring different um, lawyers just in case, you know, you need to um, – too, <laughs> so that your child can get the um, appropriate education that they need. Um, also, going to therapy. Therapy has been one of those things that is um, has been essential. Because even mm -hmm. speaking to family members, sometimes they don't understand. Like I'll speak to my mom; she's like, "I don't understand why you're depressed." And you know, it's it's good to talk to somebody else that is a professional that can help you, you know, navigate through everything. It can be very overwhelming, and I actually um, have some parents that I treat that are parents of children with autism, so I'm not necessarily treating the child. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working with the family and, you know, really teaching them parenting skills, whether it's around structure, whether it's around sound and, and, and sensitivity, uh, spatial areas. I mean, there's just a lot that they may not know, and they're not a bad parent. They're just a parent that are new to working in this realm. And it's very important to just be open to those services and avail yourself because then that is the only way that you can best serve your child. I agree. Well, that is all the time we have for today. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely okay. went over. Um, but Marcy, I know you must have a cape somewhere in your closet. <laughs> because you are a modern day superwoman and yeah. we wanted to have you on because we wanted to acknowledge you and thank you because we all really truly do admire you and we thank all of our educators but you especially as a special education educator so thank you so much for thank being you. so candid and thank you for what you do for our children we really do appreciate definitely. it definitely Thank you so much. As a much. fellow Dominicana, we're so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> Thank you so much. And and we're gonna and we're gonna find you a booth, FYI, whether you want to or not. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for joining us in this episode. If you have any questions for our guest Marcy, please DM us, and you can email us at ensalonchronicles at gmail .com. You can also DM us, send us a culonagram. Guys, you can listen to us across all platforms. We're on iHeart, Pandora, um, Spotify, iTunes whatever we're on everything and we're also on youtube and if you'd like to support the sustainability of a salon we accept anything we even barter actually <laughs> <laughs> and we have our merch and thank you marcy because marcy has bought our merch as well so we have our you know our mugs our our um, hoodies, t-shirts, whatever, just go on our website and, or Patreon and support. You can also support us by rating us and writing a review that gives us more visibility. Thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles. Oh yeah, ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles.